Well, hey, good morning there. This is Joe Van Cleve, and today I want to bring you a video. It's not a real product review like a lot of people do camera reviews, but it's kind of a review in a sense. So um, this is the narrative clip two. It's a little square piece of plastic with rounded corners and a little clip and it's intended to clip onto your clothes or your hat or hang it from your, you know, with a, like a necklace or something. But so what this is, this is a life logging camera. I got in on the, I don't know if it was an actual Kickstarter campaign, but basically last July, July of 2015, I got in on this and I was able to get a quote discounted price on it. Well, it took them almost 10 months to get it shipped to me. In the process, they redesigned the app and the, and the hardware itself to shoot video and sound, not just still photos. And they had to get it approved for import into the US in terms of regulatory FCC or whatever, because this is a Swedish company. The, the clip itself is made in Taiwan, but it's a Swedish company that designed it. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what this is and what I intend on doing with it. So the narrative clip was designed to be a life logging camera. And the idea is you put the camera on your body and it's intended to automatically take still photos every 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 seconds, however you configure it. It's intended by the manufacturers to operate through a mobile app and to automatically upload your images to a cloud-based service on their website that you have an account with. Um, now, my original interest in the, in the narrative clip was as a street photography camera because of its unobtrusive nature and the fact that you could go through a crowd of people and just be taking photos surreptitiously. But I'm also interested in the fact that it shoots video. But the problem is I'm not really interested in uploading files to their server. I want to keep them local. I want to keep my photos local and my videos local. And I've had some problems with that. First of all, I don't have a smartphone that I'm using and the narrative app does not upload to the iPad or to the Android tablets. So I have two of those tablets, but I can't use it. So I have to use their app on a PC. They have a PC version of the app. Okay, fine. Um, and so I had to configure their app so that it saves all the footage to my local hard drive. The problem I've had is that the app wants to change its setting to upload to their cloud. I have a number of pictures and videos that got uploaded to their cloud that I didn't want uploaded to their cloud. And I'm not sure if the app resets itself or if they're doing it, but it kind of makes me suspicious from a privacy standpoint. But enough said. The technical parts of this camera, let's talk about that next. So when you first configure the camera through the app, it's going to be set for shooting still photos on a periodic basis every like 15 or 20 seconds. Um, but you can trigger it manually and you can also change those settings. So right now I have it configured to not take any still photos. I had to turn that off. Um, and the way I have it configured is a double tap on the narrative will start it recording video and I have it set for 15 second long clips of video. Um, the thing to keep in mind is that if you have this thing set to take still photos on a timed basis, as soon as you move it or the camera sees light, it's going to start life logging. So this represents kind of a considerable privacy issue. And because of that, <laughs> I had me a little cigar lighter box and I, you notice the little label, do not open. And I, I lined it with some black felt and I put the narrative clip in the box and I cover, I, I close it up when I don't want it to be used because I don't know at times if this thing is on or not. So it's kind of a, of a weird little privacy issue, but I basically keep it in the box, I take it out. And then the way I have it configured is theoretically it's not taking any still photos until I double tap it. Now I can hold it at arm's length and I can get a pretty good little uh, kind of a selfie kind of a shot. But what I did with it is I had some scrap, like this is an old handle to an old tripod and I had some brass and so I call this the, the selfie shank, the selfie shank, because it kind of looks like something you would make in prison, I don't know. But anyways, my selfie shank um, 
the little brass thing just slips on the clip and now I can hold it out away from me and I can do little selfie clips and so I did a number of selfie clips this morning and I was able to download them to my uh, hard drive um, and it, they're, they're 15 seconds right but you don't have any cues you have a you have a little beep beep when it starts recording and a little beep beep at the end but unless you're really good at counting 15 counting to 15 you'll find that you're in mid sentence or mid word and it gets cut off so you kind of have to maybe talk for 10 seconds and give it a little bit of leeway. Uh, but anyways, I, I shot a, a few short little clips around the, my house and backyard just to see how it would work. So this is kind of an initial experiment with using the Narrative Clip 2 as a selfie vlogging camera. Keep in mind also, it's totally auto exposure, auto white balance. You don't have any control over that. It's 1080p, 30 frames per second, and it's MP4 format. There's a little hole here in the side, that's the microphone. There's four little white LEDs that are the charging status and also they kind of blink when it's uploading files. Um, the camera lens is here. There's a little door that you have to pry off with your finger. If you're, if you're a man and don't have sharp fingernails, it's kind of hard to do, but that's the mini USB connector. And then the clip, they give you an extra clip for attachments. But that's basically it. It's a life logging camera, so let's see here. So we are recording uh, the 15 second clip on the life logging camera and with the selfie shank. So this is it. Let's see, there it is. There's the little beep, right? So that was 15 seconds. So there it is. And we'll uh, put all these things together. And uh, I should also mention that getting these files into my iPad, I use iMovie on the iPad for my videos. Getting these files into that is really a, a workaround because you have to first make sure that you get the files on your hard drive instead of up on their cloud. If, you, if the files go to their cloud, you can't get it back. So let me describe for you one of the uh, problems I had this morning with using the, the Narrative Clip 2. I had shot two clips and I wanted to transfer them to my hard drive. I connected the camera to the computer and waited for it to transfer and it writes um, a a log file to the same folder where the where the images are going to be. It creates a new folder for every date. Um, but so the log file was there, but the the videos weren't. And I was I also noted that the power was almost at zero, which was very strange because when I last used it last week and put it in its little metal box, it it, it, it had plenty of charge. Um, so anyways, it turned out that it had uploaded those two clips to the Narrative App Cloud instead of on my hard drive and I found out that the setting in the narrative app on my computer had been changed where the box was checked to upload it to the cloud instead of to my hard drive which I don't remember changing that. Um, also my so the narrative clip 2 has Wi-Fi but I have not configured a Wi-Fi um, router for it and my router is all password protected but it, it is possible that even in its uh, storage box perhaps it saw an unsecured uh, Wi-Fi signal from a neighboring house and maybe it, it, it's programmed to automatically dial home to mama and maybe it did so and maybe it uploaded or maybe it constantly periodically checks uh, like Android tablets do. You have to put them in airplane mode if you want their batteries to be conserved for instance. So it, there may be some kind of hidden communication thing going on and, and maybe that's why it changed it. But keep in mind, it does have Wi-Fi um, capability. But I find that I transfer, even with a USB 2 cable, transferring these, these MP4 videos uh, to my computer are pretty slow compared to this GH3 camera, for instance. So it is a slower transfer speed, even with a wired connection. But it, it is OK. And I, again, I'm not really totally sure how I'm going to like it. But we're going to play with it and have fun. Okay, I should mention um, regarding getting your files from your Clip 2 into your iPad involves, as I've described earlier, first getting the, the files from the Clip into the Clip folders on your PC using the Clip app. Then managing iTunes is even worse than the Clip app. I'm surprised Apple, all the billions of dollars they make, they've never made iTunes better. but you have to 
import all these clips into iTunes and then you have to sync your iPad to iTunes and then they don't show up on the camera roll and then you have to go into iMovie and in the iPad and select video to import videos and then you have to import the clips from iTunes and that only shows up once if you add more video files later uh, through iTunes they won't show up you'll have to delete everything and start over so it's a real clue it took me an hour or two to, to figure this out this morning anyways um, so once you figure it out hopefully it'll be a, you know, reliable for you but the iPad with iMovie is a good editing platform for simple videos but it's just iTunes is a terrible piece of software Apple should be ashamed so let's take a look now at some of this uh, footage that I've shot with the narrative clip 2. This is one of them, by the way. So we are recording uh, the 15 second clip on the life logging camera and with the selfie shank. So this is it. Yeah, so I recorded two short videos this morning on the narrative clip 2 and the app on my PC automatically changed itself to upload them to their cloud instead of can save to my hard drive. So they're doing The problem I had was the narrative app on my PC I had set last week to automatically download the clips to my PC locally and somehow the setting got changed to upload to the uh, to the cloud and I'm So anyways my goal here is to be able to shoot a series of short 15 second clips and then import them via my PC to my iPad and make videos so we'll see. So I made this homemade selfie stick out of an old uh, handle and a piece of brass. I'll show you in a little bit. But basically, I want to be able to carry this thing around and just do uh, do vlogging, kind of as a vlogging camera. So we'll see. So you activate the video mode the way I have it programmed with two taps on the on the clip, and I I can tap on to the, the selfie stick twice, and it'll it'll activate it pretty reliably. So that's cool. So you have to do some uh, roundabout things to get the clips into iMovie and then from iMovie or into iTunes on the PC and then from iTunes into the iPad. And then from the iPad it's kind of tricky to get it into iMovie. But So I was thinking that a, a video is really or a film is really a series of short clips that are edited together. So I'm doing 15 second clips here and I should be able to just stick them together like sound bites and make them into a continuous kind of a production I hope. Anyways, this is Joe Van Cleve with a very brief initial introduction of the narrative clip two. You have a good day.